A beautiful life does not just happen. It is built by prayers, humility, sacrifice and love. A very warm good morning to all my dear students. In our previous session, we learned about how revolutions came into existence, the changes that happened due to the birth of Renaissance in Europe and we also studied about the 13 colonies of America who fought against the exploitative laws of the Britishers. Thus, American Revolution became an inspiration for the other countries to fight for their freedom. We now move on to our second session. Children, now let us start with the French Revolution. French Revolution was a revolution against the autocratic rule of the Bourbon kings, clergy and the nobles. So French Revolution was a revolution against the autocratic rule of the Bourbon kings, clergy and the nobles. Now, in this chapter, French Revolution starts with quotes of some Bourbon kings of Versailles Palace. Versailles Palace was the center of their power. Now, let us move on to the quotes. I am the state. God has given absolute power to the king over his subjects and only God has the authority to question him. This was quoted by Louis XIV. In this quote, Louis XIV tries to say that God has given him ultimate or complete power to rule over his subjects and only God has the authority to question him. Second one, after me the deluge. This was quoted by Louis XV. Here he tries to say that once he is no more, entire France will be destroyed. Finally, if they can't eat bread, let them eat cake. This was quoted by Mary Anthony. Here, the court tries to say that if they don't have bread to eat, let them eat cake. From the above quotes given in the text, it is clear that during the 17th and the 18th century, the people of France experienced autocratic rule of the Bourbon kings of the Versailles palace, Rulers were squanders. The common people experienced low social status in the society. The, the common people were deprived of food, clothing and shelter. They did not have any right in the government. And finally, the plight of the common people was very pathetic. In France, nine-tenths of the population died of hunger and one-tenth of indigestion. What does this quote mean? Here, the quote says, Majority of the common people in France lived a miserable life, whereas minority people that included the kings, clergy and nobles led a luxurious and an extravagant life. This situation was the result of the social and economic inequality that existed in France. Now we move on to the French society. The French society was divided into three strata. These three strata were known as the estates. So once again, the French society was divided into three strata. These strata were known as estates. So now let us see which are the estates. First estate was known as, they were the clergy. Second estate comprised of nobility. Third estate comprised of the middle class. Once again, first estate comprised of clergy. Second estate, nobility. And the third estate as the middle class. Students, now let us move into the French society. We already said the first estate as clergy. Second estate as nobility and third estate as the middle class. So we move on to the first estate as clergy. They held vast lands, collected a tax called tithe from the farmers. They were exempted from paying taxes. 
controlled higher positions in the administration, administration and military services. So once again, first estate clergy, they held vast lands, they collected tax called tithe from the farmers, they were exempted from paying the taxes and they controlled higher positions in the administrative and military services. Moving on to the second estate which is the nobility. Here they were engaged in military service. They collected various taxes from the farmers. Made farmers work without wages. Same as that of clergy. They were exempted from paying taxes. They led a luxurious life. And they too held vast lands. So once again we move on to nobility. Second estate nobility. They were engaged in military service. They collected various taxes from the farmers. Made farmers work without wages. They were exempted from paying taxes. They led a luxurious life. And finally they too have held vast lands. Moving on to the third and the final estate comprised of middle class. The people that were included in the middle class were traders, writers, Lawyers, officials, teachers, bankers, farmers and craftsmen. So the people who comprised of the middle class were you have traders, writers, lawyers, officials, teachers, bankers, farmers and craftsmen. Now they had no role in the administration. They paid a tax called tail to the government. They experienced a low social status in the society and finally they had to pay taxes to the clergy and the nobles. So once again, they had no role in the administration. They paid a tax called tail to the government. They experienced a low social status in the society and finally they had to pay taxes to the clergy as well as the nobles. Some important thinkers or ideologists in France play an important role in making the people aware of the inequalities and exploitation were volatile, ridiculed the exploitation of clergy, promoted rational thinking, ideals of equality and humanism. So once again volatile ridiculed the exploitation of clergy and promoted rational thinking, ideals of equality and humanism. Moving on to Rousseau, spelled out the importance of freedom with the statement, man is born free but everywhere he is in chains. Declared that the people are the sovereign. So once again Rousseau spelled out the importance of freedom with the statement, Man is born free, but everywhere he is in chains. Declare that the people are the sovereign. Finally, Montesquieu encouraged democracy and the public. Suggested division of powers of the government into legislature, executive and the judiciary. So once again, Montesquieu encouraged democracy and the republic. Suggested division of powers of the government into legislature, executive and the judiciary. Factors that aggravated the economic or financial crisis in France were the luxurious life and the squander of the Bourbon kings, clergy and the lords. We already mentioned earlier that the Bourbon kings, clergy and the lords lived a luxurious and an extravagant life. Second one, the frequent wars they waged. They always, these kings, clergy and the lords had frequent wars among themselves. Third one, frequent drought and crop failure. And finally, the financial and the military assistance given to the Americans in the American War of Independence. So once again, the factors that aggravated the economic or financial crisis in France were the luxurious life and the squander of the Bourbon kings, clergy and the lords, the frequent wars they waged, 
frequent drought and crop failure and finally the financial and military assistance given to the Americans in the American War of Independence. In 1789, in order to levy new taxes, Louis XVI summoned the States General, the Legislative Assembly of the representatives from all the three estates. Here all the three estate means is was the French society where we studied about the three estates as in the first estate as the clergy, second estate as the nobility and the third estate as the middle class. Secondly, the state general had three estates which was similar to the French society. Traditionally, the first and the second estates argued for the estate-wise single voting system. I repeat, it was the first and the second estates who argued for estate-wise single voting system. As a result, the nobility and the clergy could always overrule the third estate. But the third estate demanded for individual vote for each member of all the three estates. These causes led to the outbreak of the French Revolution. So we will go once again. In 1789, in order to levy new taxes, Louis XVI summoned the States General, the Legislative Assembly of the representatives from all the three estates. The States General had three estates. Traditionally, the first and the second estates argued for estate-wise voting system. As a result, nobility and the clergy could overrule the third estate. But the third estate demanded for individual vote for each member of the three estates. This led to the outbreak of the French Revolution. While the arguments between the three estates continued, the third estate declared themselves as the National Assembly of France. They assembled in the tennis court nearby and swore not to leave the tennis court until they framed a new constitution for France. This event came to be known as the tennis court oath. So we'll go through once again. While the arguments between the three estates continue, the third estate declared themselves as the National Assembly of France. They assembled in the tennis court oak nearby and swore not to leave until a new constitution was framed for France. This event came to be known as the tennis court oak. The events that followed after the tennis court oath were on 14th of July 1789, revolutionaries stormed with the slogan Liberty, Equality and Fraternity, demolished the Bastille prison, the symbol of Bourbon monarchy. This event is considered as the commencement of the French Revolution. So here, the revolutionaries marched forward by using three slogans. They were liberty, equality and fraternity. With these three ideals, they demolished the Bastille prison which was the symbol of Bourbon monarchy. This event is considered as the commencement of French Revolution. Moving on to the second one, that is on 12th of August 1789, the National Assembly passed the Declaration of the Rights of the Man and of the Citizen. So on 12th of August 1789, the National Assembly passed the Declaration of the Rights of the Man and of the Citizen. Going on to October 1789, thousands of women marched from Paris to the Palace of Versailles with the slogan, Give us bread. Finally, on September 1792, the National Convention formed as per the new constitution proclaimed 
France as Republic. When France sneezes, rest of Europe catches cold. This quotation was remarked by Metternich, an Austrian Chancellor. Here he tries to remark the impact or influence of French Revolution on Europe based on three ideas. They were liberty, equality and fraternity. So once again, when France sneezes, rest of Europe catches cold. This statement was remarked by Metternich, the Austrian Chancellor. He tries to remark the impact or influence of French Revolution on Europe based on three ideas. They were liberty, equality and fraternity. So students, we now move on to the influence or impact of French Revolution. First one, stimulated all the later revolutions in the world. Here, the French revolutions with its three ideas, that is liberty, equality and fraternity, motivated or inspired the other revolutions in the world. Secondly, ended the feudal system in Europe and threatened the autocratic rulers. Third one, proclaim that nation is not merely a region but the people. Fourth one, contributed the concept of people's sovereignty. Next one, led to the emergence of nationalism. Next, helped the growth of middle class people. And finally, spread the ideas of equality, liberty and fraternity. So once again, the first one stimulated all the later revolutions in the world. Second one ended the feudal system in Europe and threatened the autocratic rulers. Third one proclaimed that nation is not merely a region but the people. Next contributed the concept of people's sovereignty. Next led to the emergence of nationalism. Sixth one, help the growth of the middle class. And the last one, spread the ideas of liberty, equality and fraternity. Students, look at the picture. We had already mentioned earlier that on 12th of August 1789, the National Assembly passed the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the citizens which reflected three main ideas they were liberty equality and fraternity so the french national assembly passed the declaration of the rights of man and of the citizen which reflected the influence of three main ideologies they were liberty equality and fraternity. Students, have you heard about Napoleon Bonaparte? Yes? Okay, so Napoleon Bonaparte was an autocratic ruler who ruled France after the French Revolution for a very short period of time. He played a very important role in defeating the European Alliance which was under the leadership of England against France post the revolution period. He came into power in the year 1799. So we will go once again. After the French revolution, Napoleon Bonaparte ruled France for a short period of time. He was an autocratic ruler. He played a crucial role in defeating the European alliance which was formed under the leadership of Britain against France in the post-revolution period. So once again, he played a crucial role in defeating whom? The European Alliance which was formed under the leadership of Britain against France in the post-revolution period. 
and he came into power in France in the year 1799. Several reforms put forward by Napoleon were stimulated by the ideas and aims of the French Revolution. They were First one, farmers were made the owners of the land. First one, the farmers were made the owners of the land. Second one, formed sinking fund with the aim to avoid public debt. So second one, formed sinking fund with the aim to avoid public debt. Third one, constructed several roads for transportation. So what is the third point? Constructed several roads for transportation. Fourth one, exercise states control over the clergy. Fourth one, exercised states control over the clergy. Fifth one, established Bank of France to centralize finance. So fifth one, established Bank of France to centralize finance. And the last one, prepare a new code of law by codifying the existing laws. So last one, prepare a new code of law by codifying the existing laws. During the rule of Napoleon Bonaparte, nationalism strengthened. One by one, Napoleon invaded the other European countries. Several countries united under the leadership of England as they feared that the reforms introduced by Napoleon would spread throughout Europe. So, it was the ideals of the French Revolution. So, which were the ideals of the French Revolution? Liberty, equality and fraternity. So, it was the ideals of the French Revolution and not Napoleon that they were afraid of. Napoleon was defeated by the European alliance in the Battle of Waterloo. So, Napoleon was defeated by the European alliance in the battle of Waterloo and he lost power in the year 1815. Students, now let us move on to the summary of what we studied about French Revolution till now. We studied about the causes of French Revolution. We then studied about results, the contribution of the thinkers and the ideologies, impact of or influence of French Revolution over mm -hmm. Europe, the principles of the French Revolution that inspired the world. So which were the principles? They were liberty, equality and fraternity and finally Napoleon Bonaparte, we studied about Napoleon Bonaparte who ruled France for a short period of time. Also he was an autocratic ruler who came into power in 1799. Also, the Battle of Waterloo, wherein Napoleon was defeated by the European alliance and he lost the power in the year 1815. Moving on to the assessment area, answer these two questions in your notebook. First one, how did the resentment of the middle class led to the French Revolution? Once again, how did the resentment of the middle class led to the French Revolution? Second one, evaluate how French Revolution influenced the reforms of Napoleon. So, evaluate how French Revolution influenced the reforms of Napoleon. So, students, now we will study on the Latin American Revolution. Students, look at the slide. What do you understand? The slide shows some beautiful lines taken from the poem The Heights of Machu Picchu by Pablo Neruda. This was the dwelling. This is the place. Here, the broad grains of maize rose up and fell again 
light thread A. Here gold thread came off the vicuna to clothe lovers, tombs and mothers, king and prayers and warriors. Give me back the slave you buried. So these lines were quoted by Pablo Neruda in his poem Heights of Machu Picchu. So we already mentioned that the above lines were extracted from the poem Heights of Machu Picchu by Pablo Neruda. The poem portrays the sites of Machu Picchu which was one of the important ancient centers of South American civilizations. The description given by Pablo Neruda in his poem about the economic prosperity of Latin America are first one, abundance of resources, second one, cultivated maize, third one, reared sheep, fourth one, acquired wealth through trade. The main intention or aim of the Spanish and the Portuguese was to exploit the economic richness of Latin America. So the Spanish and Portuguese colonized the Latin America to exploit the economic richness. So students, now we are going to study on how the colonial rule affected the life of the natives of Latin America. First one, the Spanish and the Portuguese propagated their languages, religions and customs. So first one, Spanish and Portuguese propagated their languages, religions and customs. Second one, they built houses and churches in European style. So second one, they built houses and churches in European style. Third one, schools were established for imparting Spanish system of education. So basically schools in Latin America were started just to impart Spanish system of education. Fourth one, the Spanish farming methods and crops were introduced. Fifth one, new diseases spread from Europeans to the Latin Americans. So new diseases started spreading from Europeans to the Latin American people. Sixth one, racial discrimination was enforced towards the natives in all walks. So the people of Latin America experienced racial discrimination in all walks of their life. Seventh one, looted the resources and wealth of the Latin American people. So all the Europeans, mainly the Spanish and the Portuguese started looting the resources and wealth of the Latin America. Finally, enslaved the natives to work. So the people of Latin America were forced to work for these colonial rulers. The leaders who contributed to the Latin American independence were first one Jose de San Martin, second one Francisco Miranda and third one Simon Bolivar. Once again, first one Jose de San Martin, second one Francisco Miranda and finally Simon Bolivar. Let us move on to what we studied in Latin American Revolution. We studied about the colonialism in Latin America and also we studied about the leaders who contributed to the Latin American independence. Here we studied about the names of the leaders who contributed to the Latin American independence. So students, let us move on to the assessment area. Answer the question in your notebook. Question is, how did the colonial rule influence the Latin American countries? Once again, how did the colonial rule influence the Latin American countries? So students, 
that's all for today i hope the portion start today was clear to you thank you stay home stay safe